Epic Morning is brought to you by Sun and Ski, your new mountain sports headquarters. Okay, now it's time for my first installment of Hula Hoops and Hammers, uh, the basics, the fundamentals of how to cast a fly rod. First thing I want to point out is a spinning gear, spinning rods, conventional tackle, push button rods, the kind that have the bail that you flip over, the kind that have weighted lures on the end. So I'm going to show you basically what a weighted lure looks like. So this is where all the weight is on conventional tackle. Now with a fly rod, there's no weight associated with the fly on the end. So to generate the line speed, all the weight is built into the actual fly line itself. Now the only similarity between a fly rod and a spinning rod is that when that rod stops in that forward direction, the lure, which is what I'm holding on to here, or the fly continues along the same tra tra trajectory. That's the only thing that is similar between the two of them. So what we need to do when we understand how to fly fish is how to understand how to cast that fly to those targets. Now some targets you're casting to, some fish could be 10 feet away, and it's real easy to make a nice little gentle cast. Other flies, other fish, other targets in the river could be 20, 30, 40, upwards of 80 to 90 feet away. So you have to understand how to make that rod work forward and backwards in unison because they are mirror images of each other to get that fly to go to the target. So what we're going to do next after the break, when we come back from my next epic morning, is focus on what the fly rod does and how you make it do what it's supposed to do. We're taking a quick break from this epic morning brought to you by Sun and Ski, and then we're going to take you inside a place where you're going to find beautiful fossils, minerals, and other decorative objects. It's called By Nature Gallery in Beaver Creek. We'll be right back.